Saskatchewan's looking at uh, increasing their wind by 100 megawatts in 2016 and another 1,600 megawatts between 2019 and 2030. So that's about seven or eight times the amount of production that they've got right now in the province. So that's quite an increase. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Hi, David Dodge here for Green Energy Futures. Saskatchewan wants to get 50% of its electricity generation capacity from renewable energy. This week, we go down to Morse, Saskatchewan to see one of the newest wind farms in the province. Hi, I'm Barry. I work for Algonquin Power, based in Oakville, Ontario. Um, we are a generation company that produces mostly uh, green energy. That's our focus on green energy projects. Traveling east down the Trans-Canada Highway from Swift Current, Saskatchewan, the wind turbines start to appear on the eastern skyline as you approach Morse. It's a small wind farm consisting of 10 giant white gearless turbines. These ones here are 80 meter towers and then the blade is another 55 meters. So that'd be 135 meters from the ground to the tip of the blade. For comparison's sake, a Canadian football field is about 110 meters long. So just one of these turbines from foot to tip is a third taller than a football field is long. Barry Chichkowski says Saskatchewan is an excellent province for wind power because overall the winds are consistent and non-turbulent. He says that the turbines in Morse have a very high capacity factor of about 50%. This means turbines here will produce half of their nameplate capacity on average over time. In Manitoba, on one of Algonquin's farms, the same turbine has a capacity factor of 42%. Because of the flat terrain, you don't get as much turbulence. So I, I think that uh, makes it very conducive for a good wind regime. This wind facility here would produce enough power to service approximately 8,500 homes. Perhaps this is why, just before the Paris climate change talks, Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall announced that Saskatchewan would be investing heavily in wind and solar energy. He pledged to get 50% of the generating capacity from renewable energy in Saskatchewan by 2030. Saskatchewan's looking at uh, increasing their wind by 100 megawatts in 2016 and another 1,600 megawatts between 2019 and 2030. So that's about seven or eight times the amount of production that they've got right now in the province. So that's quite an increase. But you can't just put a wind farm anywhere. A lot of research goes into determining the ideal placement of each project. There's all kinds of research that has to be done. I mean, what I just talked about before was one of them, the, the meteorological data. And then there's environmental and there's the terrain, how easy it is to build on, uh, what the soil conditions are like to build bases and uh, what the landowners are like, whether they'll, you know, you can get power purchase agreements or, sorry, um, landowner agreements with them. Even beyond a location suitability, there are infrastructure concerns that affect the feasibility of a project. There's all kinds of other things that come into it, like is there uh, a grid from the utility that's close enough by? Do we have to build miles and miles of uh, transmission line to get to a substation and things like that? According to Tichkowski, wind producers need to collect two years of meteorological data to confirm that a wind farm will produce sufficient power. For this project, Algonquin secured a power purchase agreement, which really helps make the wind project viable. We have contracts with the utility, with the provincial utilities called power purchase agreements, which give us a, a consistent pay for the power that we produce. And we, we try to do that as much as possible with the projects that we build just because it gives us some consistency. We know what our income is, we're putting a lot of dollars into the project so we know we've got a payback and we can do a business plan easier that way. So what price do producers need to make a wind project viable in Saskatchewan today? I would say six, seven, eight cents somewhere in that uh, per kilowatt 
hour, somewhere in that neighborhood would be good business sense. New wind projects also mean new jobs. We met Nathan Matthews, a journeyman electrician who had just started a job with Siemens doing maintenance work on the Morse wind farm. The former oil patch worker from Alberta is optimistic about opportunities in wind. Yes, I'm very optimistic as everything seems to be going green power in Canada. And I can totally see that Saskatchewan and Alberta is the way of the future. So I'm really excited for this. With a good wind resource and ambitious goals, Saskatchewan has taken an important step towards a transformation to cleaner energy. In fact, Saskatchewan is already on track to double their wind power with projects already underway. To learn more, check out our blog, photo gallery, and podcast at greenenergyfutures.ca. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and check out our other videos. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. You've seen these turbines with 55 meter blades in action. Now see where they came from. Check out our story on the Siemens Wind Turbine Factory in Tilsonburg, Ontario. It'll blow you away.